Hey chess friends, how are you? I hope you are doing well, today, I am going to show you an amazing and incredible chess game that was played between Dragon and me, in this game, I sacrificed my queen in the opening against him, it's a game full of strategy and adventure, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, and he responded with e5, knight f3 knight c6 and at this point, playing bishop to b5 is the most popular opening, or I could play knight to c3 or the alpine variation like c3 followed by d4. However, I went with knight to c3, and then he played knight to e7, this move is very absurd and illogical, but he wants to push his pawn to d5, after my bishop moved out to c4 to attack the pawn on f7 along with the knight on g5, the knight moved to g6 to free up the diagonal for the queen and potentially come to f4. That's why I decided to play h4 to counterplay the knight because its position is very passive, dragon chess, currently holding the number 3 position in the world, played knight to a5. Attacking the light square bishop, at this point, some top rated chess players might consider playing bishop, takes f7 to expose the black king, then, after h5, the knight goes to f4, you can easily capture the pawn with a check, and the queen will come to f3, pressuring the black knight and creating pressure against the f7 square on the king side, the game could play out like this, but it might turn into a drawn situation. That's why in this position, I decided not to capture the pawn on the f7 square, instead, I played pawn to h5 to kick out the knight, playing knight to f4 or any natural looking square might passivate the knight and reduce attacking chances, that's why black decided to capture my light square bishop, and I grabbed his knight on g6, his pawn on h7 is pinned down to the rook, which is why he captured the pawn with his f1, after I played d3 to kick out the knight, I went with knight to g5. Pressuring the h7 pawn with two pieces, alternatively, I could have played queen to f3 to exert pressure on the f7 square, that's why some of you might consider of playing f6, I mean, at this point, some may think that d6 or h6 are logical and playable moves, but both of these moves are completely rubbish and absurd, for instance, if you dare to play d6, then I can respond with queen to f3, threatening checkmate on the f7 square, so after the queen moves out to f6, I can easily capture the pawn. And after the queen exchanges happen on the board, you can see that the rook is attacking the black rook, and you have two double pawns on the g-file, which is why knight to f6 will create a vulnerable situation around the king and the rook on h8 at the same time, the position will be busted. So going back to the position, instead of playing d6, some of you might think of playing pawn to h6 to kick out the knight, but here, queen f3 will come anyway to attack the f7 square. So after the queen moves to e7 to protect that square, you can play the hidden and amazing move pawn to a4, directly attacking the knight on a5 on the next move, the game would continue like this, there is no potential harm or any circumstances that white can exploit, maybe in the future, that situation will happen, but in our actual game, instead of playing pawn to h6 or d6, which are weak moves that dragon chess didn't consider in the opening, he decided to go with bishop to e7 to kick out the knight. And I captured the pawn on h7, after that, we have d6, and at this juncture, some of you might be concerned about white's attack in this position now, the plan is very simple. I play queen to f3 to exert some pressure, at this juncture, my strategy involves checking the black king by playing knight f6 and then winning the rook on h8, potentially winning the queen on d8, your bishop might block on f8, but that would not resolve your position. So after I play queen to f3 to exert pressure on this file, some of you may consider playing bishop to e6 to protect that square, but you know what, I can play knight f6 anyway, because after you capture it with your pawn, I can capture your rook, checking the king, and as the dark square bishop blocks on f8, my bishop can come to h6 to exert more pressure on the dark square bishop, and it will be just a garbage position for you, the king's position will be harassed, and I will win the game completely. So going back to the position, we see that pawn takes knight is not viable, which is why, observing that queen h7 and the queen are exerting much pressure against the black king, knight to f6 might attack the rook, noticing all these tactical motives, some of you might even be concerned about the king's safety by playing king to d7, but it is a completely wicked move, 
as I can check you with my queen on g6. And as the king moves up, I can easily grab the pawn on g7, attacking the rook, and knight to d5 may come in the future, or knight to f6 will come on the next move, where the rook will be vulnerable, and the position will be completely favorable for me. This is just a game-winning situation for white, so back to the position, we see that the king has light square weaknesses because the king is exposed, dragon chess decided to block the diagonal by playing bishop to h4, it blocks the rook file, where the black rook is targeting the knight on h7. So, let me tell you a financial quote in sudden with you. You don't get rich by spending your time to save money. You get rich by saving your time to make money. And so, I played a very brilliant move. I want you to pause the video and try to find that move to safeguard your knight and continue your plan, I played knight to g5, and if you find that move, then congratulations, it is the right move because you cannot capture the knight right away, as rook takes h8 will win the queen directly on the board. That's why we have rook to f8, to exert pressure on the queen, the knight is also under attack by the two pieces, and regardless of your queen move, if you even try to save your queen, he can easily capture my knight, and I will lose material in the game, so in this position, I played the cunning move, which you might imagine in this position, try to figure out that move. The move is rook takes h4, sacrificing the queen right away, after I sacrifice my queen, the rook is well protected by the knight, you can see that the queen is exchanged for the two rooks, and while black has three minor pieces, I also have three pieces, it's rook for a knight, you could say, for now, rook to h8 is coming to attack the queen, which is why after the king moves up, we have bishop e3, followed by bishop e6, from there, knight g5 may come to attack both of the pieces, and rook to h7 will attack your double pawns, after playing castle, we have pawn to c5, black wants to reorder his knight and push forward his a and b pawns to create some counterplay, after some moves later, I immediately strike in the center by playing pawn to f4. This pawn to f4 move is very strategic and brilliant. I want to eliminate the pawn on e5, forcing you to recapture, then the pawn on c5 will be unguarded, which is why I can easily check you, and the knight will also be under attack, if you dare to capture the pawn on f4, it will unguard the d4 square, after capture and recapture, it exerts pressure on the d6 square, and also rook to h7 is coming to attack the pawn on g7, after the rook moves and a4 happens in the game, it becomes clear evidence that I want to push my pawn to a5, kicking out the knight. But you cannot push forward your pawn to a5 because it will provide me with an outpost for the knight on b5, I can even move back my knight to f3. So in this position, after I play a4, some might consider playing knight to d7, but it is a completely rubbish and absurd looking move because it exposes the king on the right side of the board, I mean, the king can be easily targeted by the knight on d5, forcing you to capture, and after recapture, the e-file will be open. The knight is also there, the dark square bishop can come to g5 if needed in the future, the black king will be exposed and face many troubles, noticing that a5 is coming, he decided to go with king to d7 to safeguard his king on the b8 square, but he forgot about the pawn on a5, now the knight has become very passive and unable to move freely on the board, the knight has only one square to go, the a8 square, after I capture the bishop on e6, forcing the king to move out. And after rook g4 happens to attack the pawn, you can see that I am developing my pieces tempo after tempo, he picks up my a pawn, and I slide my queen to b1 to protect the queen coming into that a1 square. After a few moves later, we have knight to c7, followed by bishop d2. This bishop d2 move is very strategic and bold, it exerts pressure on the queen, and the queen cannot move to the b5 square frequently because knight takes c7 will create a family fork on the king, queen, and rook, the suiting will be done, so in this position, the queen also cannot go to her natural looking square because knight takes c7 will create an effective problematic situation for the king and rook. Noticing that the queen has to safeguard the knight, he decided to capture the bishop on d2, and after I capture on c7, forking up the pieces, the king moves back, and I exchange the rook for the knight, at the end of the game, 
we get into the end game where I have two rooks, and you have two double pawns on this file. Now, a couple of moves later, I pick up the two double pawns and push forward my pawn on g4. He sacrifices the pawn on c4, but it doesn't bring any advantages for black because my pawn is faster than your bullet train. After the queen goes to g2, the rook moves, and after a couple of moves later, we have queen to f6 rook to h4, followed by rook to h1, trying to protect his family and structure, in this position, it is completely winning for me, by playing pawn to e5, I got the opportunity to move my rook all the way to a3 and pick up the pawn, playing rook to d1 rook to d3 makes it evident that my rook will pressure this pawn on d6 with the two rooks, after a couple of moves later. I joined forces with my two rooks to launch a heavy attack, some moves later, I developed my pieces, and you can see that I have three major pawns on the b and c files, by maneuvering, it leads to a checkmate by the rook on d8, what an amazing and astonishing game it was, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so, then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see you.